Today I'll be reviewing two lenses built by Samyang for the RF mount which is the 14mm 2.8 and the 85 1.4. Since I got them both at the same time, I decided to just make a double review instead of making two separate reviews as that would save me so much time. So let's start first with the 85 1.4 and just as a disclaimer, I'm definitely not sponsored by them so I'm free to say whatever I want to say about these lenses. So here's a quick rundown of the specs of this lens. This lens is built with 11 elements in 8 groups. Its aperture is from 1.4 to f16 and has 9 aperture blades. It uses a UMC glass coating. It has a filter size of about 77mm and a minimum focusing distance of about 0.9m. Okay, so the first thing that struck me when I held the Samyang 85 1.4 was definitely its weight. Because when you look at it, the first assumption that comes across your mind just looking at that girth is definitely that this lens is going to weigh a ton. But I was really pleasantly surprised to find out that this lens really is light for what it is. I mean, the Canon 85 1.2 compared to this is just a totally different beast. The Canon light like, weighs a ton compared to this. And I kind of like the weight of this Samyang. Although it may be a bit lighter, it just feels so much easier, I think, to work for long hauls. I mean, I can imagine shooting a wedding with this. I mean, it would be so much better compared to the 85 1.2 Canon. Although, of course, we're not exactly comparing apples to apples or oranges to oranges. I mean, those are totally different cameras. One's a 1.2 and this one's a 1.4. So yeah. So first I would like to talk about the general build quality of this Samyang 85 1.4. And we will first look at the packaging that it comes in with. I think the packaging and overall unboxing experience was all right, not totally blown away. But then again, I think all this overly elaborate packaging isn't really good for the planet. So I guess I'm really cool with that. So what you get in the box is the lens, of course, a lens hood and also a lens pouch, which is really useful, especially when you want to actually keep your lens unscathed. Okay, so what did I think about the general build quality of this lens? Well, to be really honest, for a fast 85mm, I do feel it is a little light and something I'm not used to yet. But that's not to say that it's totally a bad thing. It's just that I've been working with my 85 1.2 for so long and I've come accustomed to the size and weight of it. And yeah, that's basically it, I guess. But overall, I would say the build quality is really good. With this lens, you have a full metal construction. Even the focusing ring is built from metal. So it's, uh, yeah, I guess it's more durable, but it doesn't have that soft, feely kind of thing for a focusing ring. But that's fine with me. The AF2 manual focus button is, is all right. I mean, it's quite easy to access and there's nothing out of the ordinary, I guess. And that's basically it. That's how it looks on the outside. Nothing really out of the ordinary. But I have to admit that I don't really enjoy all these focus by wire sort of lenses because you don't have that tactile feel of actually turning your focusing ring. Um, with the older lenses, you really felt that you were doing something in the focusing process. And with these focus by wire lenses, there's always that sort of like slight disconnection sort of thing that you get that there's no sort of, you know, it's always the same, you know, whichever way you, you twist your focusing ring, it just feels the same. So it's kind of sterile to me. Well, that being said, I guess now is probably the best time to get to the juicy bits. And how does this lens really perform? Now let's just have a look. So after staying at home during the lockdown for so long, I decided to just go out of town and just go somewhere a bit more interesting. So I took it out and uh, here are some shots from that excursion, I guess. And also some random shots that I managed to take closer to home. Pretty much all the shots that you see in this scene were taken wide open. In this scene here, I wanted to demonstrate how good was the continuous autofocus on the 85 1.4. And to be really honest with you, I am really quite surprised. It is really good. I mean, there were definitely times when my daughter's head turned around and it did miss focus. But other than that, it really is decent. It's not bad. Wide open, I have to admit, this lens does have some vignetting, but I don't really mind vignetting. I kind of like the look actually. And it's always easily, you know, corrected in Photoshop or Lightroom, whichever you use. 
I guess it goes without saying, the background separation with this lens is really good. Uh, for whatever reason, this shot had somewhat a swirly kind of bokeh, but yeah, this lens does demonstrate the typical sort of um, cat's eyes towards the corners of the actual frame. So yeah, I guess it's to be expected sometimes with these sort of lenses. Since we got a general idea of how the lens performs, I guess now would be a great time to go into the more serious part of the review. So what I did was I wanted to actually do a direct comparison of how this lens performs against the 85 1.2 by Canon. And yeah, here are my findings, I guess. So the picture on the right is the uh, picture from the Canon lens and on the left is by the Samyang. Both lenses were set at f1.4. The first thing that I noticed was the fact that the Canon is still way brighter than the Samyang at f1.4, which is really interesting to know. And to be really honest with you, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that my old Canon lens is still way sharper than this new Samyang lens, which means that basically Canon didn't make me a lemon, you know, so it's nice to know. You don't say. But let's just make this really clear. It's not to say that the Samyang lens isn't good at all. It is really good. But I guess in this case and this specific scenario, somehow the Canon rendered the image a lot clearer. So yeah points to Canon on this one. So in this next comparison, I'm just going to compare how lens flaring is handled in both lenses. Let's have a look. In the lens flaring test, I really couldn't distinguish between both of them. They seem to be handling lens flaring pretty well. So I'd say they have more or less an equal performance when it comes to lens flaring. Very well controlled. You hardly see anything that is too major. Pretty good, I guess. In this breathing test, I used tap to focus to focus the scene, but generally I wasn't too happy with both of the lenses' performance in terms of being snappy enough to focus on a new subject that we've just tapped in. In terms of focusing, I did feel that the Samyang's focusing was a lot smoother. The motor movement is a lot smoother and a lot more controlled, but it could be something due to the fact that my lens, or the Canon one, is a bit older, so yeah, that could be something. In terms of lens breathing, I felt that the lens breathing was pretty controlled and wasn't something that was too crazy, so... Yeah, that's pretty good to know. Okay, so far I have to admit, I'm definitely quite impressed with the performance that the Samyang is offering at that price range. And to think that it was pretty much shoulder to shoulder with many of the tests that I did, it is quite a bargain actually. Anyway, I'm not gonna draw any conclusions right now. I still have to do the 14 2.8 review, remember? Okay, so here's a quick rundown of the specs of the 14 mm 2.8. This lens is built with 14 elements in 10 groups. This lens has an aperture range from f2.8 all the way to f22. It comes with seven aperture blades, which are rounded. This lens also comes with UMC coating on the glass. Unlike most conventional lenses, this lens doesn't have a filter thread, so all the filters that you use will have to be from the rear part of this lens, and it's sort of like gel slot-in filters, so that's really useful, especially if it's an ultra-wide like this. And this lens has a minimum focusing distance of about 20 centimeters, which is really nice, especially when it's an ultra-wide, because you can get really close to your subjects. And the lens weighs around 523 grams, which isn't too light for something that's this small, but it's nice and chunky, which is nice. Okay, now I guess it's time for the unboxing experience. Well, it's pretty much the same as the 85 1.4. It's all pretty standard. Um, in the box, you get the lens, of course. Uh, the lens comes with an inbuilt lens hood, and it comes also with a dedicated lens cap, and that's basically it. There was no pouch, nothing. So what do I actually think about the general build quality of this lens? Well, to be fair, I felt that it is really well built. It feels quite chunky in the hand, it's really good. It's all metal again, just like the 85 1.4. And even the focusing ring is fully metal as well. So there's definitely no rubber rings that you usually get with uh, most of these modern lenses, which is quite nice. The AF2 manual button is pretty standard. It is easy to access and it's easy to use. And yeah, I mean, uh, focus by wire, as I said earlier as well, is always, you're always gonna feel that sense of disconnection at times because it's not that linear at times. But all in all, I definitely have no complaints about the build quality. It's pretty good for what it is, and it is what it is. So let's just cut to the chase and just show you some sample images from this lens, shall we? Since I brought both of the lenses to the excursion, well, here are some more shots from the seaside and also some random shots.
One thing I love so much about this lens is the fact that it just absorbs everything in front of the lens. There's hardly ever a moment that you feel that you can't get everything in the shot. Of course, because of that, it does have some side effects, which is if you get your subjects too close to the lens, you're definitely going to get some form of distortion. But it's not a bad thing if you do respect its qualities, I guess. The other thing that I really did enjoy about this lens is the fact that you can get really close to your subject and you can put your subjects in a very dynamic way into their environment. And it's also quite a good environmental portrait lens, actually. It did perform quite well at night too, which is good. Of course, don't expect performance like an f1.4, but it still do the job. All in all, I thought this lens wasn't too bad and it's a good lens to have around, especially if you're in a pinch and you have such tight spaces to work with. Also, a very good thing about this lens is the fact that the background separation is really good, especially if you get really close to your subjects. Well, I guess it's time to be a bit more critical and just have a closer look at what this lens does really render when you take shots with it. Since I don't own any 14mm, I just have a sort of like simple comparison this time around with a 16 to 35. So it's not going to be a direct comparison like the review for the 85 before this, but yeah, I guess it'll do. And besides, I don't want this review to be so long that you guys aren't going to watch anything anyway. So yeah, I don't think so. Okay, so in this example, what you see is a picture that was taken with a 16 to 35 at 16 millimeters. And this next picture is at 14 millimeters. So yeah, just have a look at the difference. Although two millimeters may not be a significant amount of difference, but in wide angle terms, it can be quite a lot. As I said, if you're in a pinch for space, then 14 millimeters will definitely bring you a lot further. And at times it could just very well be the difference of making the shot or not. So I guess it's a choice that you would have to make. So in this example, I just wanted to show how well does the 14mm Samyang performs in terms of autofocus compared to a native Canon lens. And it is really good actually. I am quite impressed with the continuous autofocus. I was very happy to know that it even detects the eyes so well. So it is really something that is quite impressive for a third party lens. I think it did perform just as well. And in some cases, if not better than the 16 to 35. So kudos to Samyang on this, well done. I'm just gonna leave this footage running just a bit longer so that you can really tell the difference between both of them. Well, I guess in the lens flaring test, you can clearly see that the Canon has more lens flare and the Samyang is a lot more well controlled. But to be honest with you, I did find that the lens flaring, despite its, you know, some people may say that lens flaring is bad. I did find that the Canon's lens flaring did look somewhat pleasant somehow. I mean, if you do still want a lens flare, that is. Are you serious? But yeah, I guess to be honest, I guess Samyang won this round as well. But don't go crazy on the comments. I do realize that we're not exactly comparing apples to apples here, so chill. Okay, so in this next test, I just wanted to see how does the Samyang and the Canon sort of like compare both shooting wide open. I know I'm not gonna do sort of like every single aperture value, but it's just as a simple comparison, just to get a rough bearing of where the Samyang really stands in and amongst the big boys. In this particular shot, I did notice that both of the lenses perform pretty well in the middle of the frame, but where you really start to see Samyang shining through, although one is a zoom lens and one is is a prime which isn't immediately a fair comparison but the Samyang actually rendered very clear edges as well where the Canon pretty much dropped in quality and I don't know whether it's more to do with a bokeh but I'm assuming I mean if I have a good opinion on the Canon it's probably a bokeh thing or a zoom thing yeah so do let me know in the comments what do you think Okay, before I go waffling off and never ending this video, I think that's about enough comparisons I really wanna do in this video. As it is, this is probably the longest video I've ever done ever. So before I bore you guys to death, I think I might as well start coming up with some conclusions. 
Mm -hmm. Well, what do I really think about the 14 2.8? Well, to me, the 14 2.8 is really well worth the money, especially if you're in a pinch and you have a tight budget because the similar 14 millimeter in the Canon or any other series of lenses would definitely set you way back more than this lens. So this lens does sort of like come across as a really good bargain for what it is. As for the Samyang 85mm to 1.4, I really think it's good value for money. And the best part is you're not really compromising that much quality for the amount that you're paying. So that's really good. Yeah, it's kind of a no brainer kind of purchase, especially if you're in there and you have that sort of budget. All in all, I must say, I'm quite impressed by the quality that these lenses do offer at that price range. I mean, just a few years back, you'll definitely not get such bargains like this for a super wide and also a prime 85. So you definitely can't go wrong with any of them. But if you do have the extra budget, why not just get both?